There are many things that you could do to perfect your quarter inch seam. It could come down to the foot you're using, where you guide your fabric, even down to the thread and needle you choose. There's lots of things that you can do to master your own quarter inch because we all tend to guide things just a little bit different, whether we see things differently or our machines are just set up differently. So just to, I'm gonna run through a variety of different things that can help. Now, if you're just gonna use a standard foot you can use your 1c foot and there is a place right here that is a quarter inch mark notice that is right in front of the feed dog here now as long as you bring your fabric right up to it so I'm gonna just move some fabric here like this so you can see that mark, you will get a scant quarter inch. Now I said we we're gonna perfect our quarter inch seam allowance. Really what we're gonna talk about is perfecting your scant quarter inch. Now another thing to do is sometimes to move your needle position over just a hair to one side. Now depending on if you have a straight stitch throat plate on, so if you put that zero there, this doesn't actually let you move it from side to side. So you like can gain one thing and give up one thing. So depending on what you have set up, but that straight stitch throat plate that you get with this machine, that is a great way to start perfecting it. Now, sometimes I've been known to wanna to move my needle just a little bit and not actually turn this on. So I can move it over and it will still shimmy down that single hole there and give me just a little bit of a scoot closer to my uh, guide that I'm following. If I'm using the 97 D foot, I'm gonna put that on. I can pull the dual feed down and then of course attach the guide with the screw and screwdriver that came with it. This will allow you to get that hugged directly up against that guide. And then again, you can move your needle position over just a little bit. Here we go, and slide that in, tighten that up. I lowered the presser foot so I can move this guide just where I want it to be. And then I can move my needle position over one notch to the right. Gosh, a hair's breadth can make such a difference. And the difference comes when you're actually sewing triangles, uh, corner to corner, that bias is the true, uh, true look of getting a quarter inch seam. If you're just doing something with squares and rectangles, not a big deal, just be accurate all the way through your project from start to finish. The other thing that makes a difference is your thickness of thread. I'm holding here an Arafil size 50 slash two, that's a two ply, so it's a very fine, fine thread. On the machine, you'll find a needle that is either a quilting size 75 needle or a Microtech size 70 needle, and those two are perfectly paired for this thin thread. Also too, I have been known to make my stitch length a little bit shorter. I am in the range of a 2.25 for a stitch length that I can still see to take out. <laughs> and it's a little bit closer together for those lighter weight cotton fabrics. So all these elements can come into play. And really what you're trying to do is get that next time you have a, a half square triangle <laughs> in your the mix of your pattern that you aren't lopping off the tips of the triangles when you go to do the final seam allowances. Your blocks measure the size your pattern says. If they're supposed to finish out at six and a half inches, you truly have a square that is six and a half inches. But the key is in the scant quarter inch, the finer thread, the thinner needle, and knowing where to guide your fabric along the way.